Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. All right, good morning, everybody. This is Eric with Ham Radio Concepts. I'm with Jerry here. This is K4WOF. I want to make a video. Um, the local club here has some, some ideas. They always participate in stuff. Uh, local club is the W4OT. And uh, now they're doing fox hunting. So I wanted to uh, get with a couple guys and, and make a video on this. It's a great opportunity. Um, fox hunting, basically, they're using hidden transmitters uh, with directional antennas and radios and trying to find these in a large area. Um, I'm going to let J uh, Jerry here elaborate a little more. Jerry, tell me, uh, what do you want to tell me? How your, your made antennas, your made transmitters, what are you using here? Yes, thanks a lot, Eric. Um, well, we're just getting started with this, and we have two foxes that we've hidden here at Riverside Park in Vero Beach uh, today. It's our third one. It's, we're all just learning. And um, basically, we're using, most of us, these uh, homemade antennas. It's a famous design that is easily available on the Internet. Is a tape measure, uh, PVC tubing, and uh, there's a ballon on this one. Uh, typically, everyone makes them pretty much this way. Sometimes the attenuator, which I've mounted on my radio, is mounted on the antenna, but it's, uh, I don't think there are two, two alike anywhere in the world. And so we have two foxes. One of them is a handheld radio controlled by a Bionics Picon controller in an ammo can. And, uh, the Those other, ammo boxes always have a good use for something. They do. No, they, you can pay, you, if you go to a ham fest, you'll find an ammo can. I'm sure of that. Uh, but go on. Absolutely. And the other one is also from Bionics, and it's a, um, a, a transmitter that he manufactures that anyone can purchase, and it's a 700 milliwatt transmitter. So we're at two right now. We're going to add a third fox, and everyone's having a blast. So, so basically, you can find the tape measure antenna online. Um, if you can come over here and take a close look at this here. Uh, the tape measure online, a lot of people have used um, a cheap tape measure and made this and they've used it for satellite, they've used it for uh, fox hunting. A lot of different uh, antenna have been made like this. There's little tweaks and differences in each one, but I mean this is very inexpensive and a great project to make um, with this. And um, so basically it, this is tuned for VHF 2 meter, correct? That's correct. And you can make one for UHF or whatever you cut the frequency, the, cut the distance of the driven element and add the reflector and director, you can make a Yagi for any different frequency. That's a whole other video. So basically uh, with the attenuator now, this is attenuating the signal so that when you get closer to the fox, the hidden transmitter, you're actually uh, reducing the, uh, when you're real close to it, it'd be hard to narrow it down unless you attenuate the signal. Uh, plans, I'm sure, are, are found online to make attenuators as well. Yes, there, there, there are plans online. There are kits that you can buy very inexpensively, $8, $12 for uh, one that's built, or a very uh, high-end one like this is, is a lot more, about $59. Right. This is from Arrow Antennas. Arrow Antennas, yeah. So uh, this is a great thing. And I, I saw before you were, you were folding this up. What were you doing here when you were putting this like this? Does that do anything for performance or... Does that just kind of make it shorter to, to uh, transport? Well, what we were doing there is someone had uh, a rig set up without an attenuator, and so they were folding the, the antenna this way to reduce its, uh, its sensitivity as they got closer to the fox so that they could see the direction right. of the fox. Gotcha. And, and the fox is probably vertical or, or horizontally oriented, uh, oriented, depending on how it's set up? Yeah, yes, it could be either way, the polarization. We have ours vertical today, so we're using our antennas horizontally. Right. And one day when I get some time for some other videos, I want to do some satellite, working satellite videos, so we'll be using something like this for that as well. Uh, let's take a look at um, uh, the actual foxes, if I can get a close-up of the foxes, and then we'll go with John, KM4MCK, and we'll uh, go hunt for one and see what happens. So he's got a transceiver, you could use fox, any transceiver. Fox in a box. There yeah. we go. Yeah. The transceiver, we got the in and out, the uh, microphone and speaker going into the uh, PicoCon controller and that's what sends all the tones and everything a little a nine volt battery to power that the radio battery is powering the radio and that's more or less it and that's it so you, you could use this as, antenna so it's yep 
So it's vertically oriented and it's... Uh, so when you see these uh, ammo the boxes at the ham, uh, ham fest, you can pick one of these up and make a fox here for it. And usually they're watertight and, and uh, very good for, for this always, kind of purpose. Always check the gasket. Yep. <laughs> and you can put as much power under as the radio will do. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll run for days. Yeah. All right, here is... Uh, so this is John, KM4MCK's... Uh, Yagi here that we're going to use for uh, finding that. So, John, you made this yourself as well. Yep, I got the plans off the internet, and uh, uh, like Jerry's attenuator was on his radio, I mounted mine directly to the antenna. Oh, yours is inside the box here. Mine's inside, so I just took some PVC. I bought this kit, shipped to me, it was $11. I soldered it together. Oh, cool. Wired it in. And for, for the people that are going to ask the questions, you know, attenuator makes it a lot better because a lot easier once you get close. When you get in close proximity of 500 feet, you're going to have signal all, you know, really close around you. You won't be able to narrow it down. So what they were doing was putting the attenuator on and going up a few megahertz off frequency. And uh, that way, if you had any kind of signal, you were pretty much, you know, direct, uh, right directing on it. So the attenuator makes it a lot easier at close distance. But... When you're out in the open, you want to have no attenuator on so that you can kind of get an idea. Is it north or south? Okay, we're going to move south, and then uh, when I get closer, then you can see if it's east or west. Um, and uh, what's the what's the coax right there? That's like a ballon or, or something right in the middle? That's a ballon, yep. The so it's a, some kind of matching network or something? That's what the direction said to do, so that's what I did. <laughs> okay, very good. You did. I, I'm, I'm impressed on the way these are made like this. Uh, you know, very inexpensive and... and uh, you can buy a commercially made handheld Yagi antenna. The difference would be, I think, the commercially made are uh, dual band with the diplexer for VHF, UHF simultaneously uh, transmit and receive. You could actually transmit on this if you wanted to without the attenuator. So, uh, but everybody seems to be using their ID51 here. Uh, that's what everybody's been using. Um, so. Uh, Yep, I, found, I bought these parts at Home Depot, minus the coax and the attenuator, but all the PVC, the, the tape measure itself, uh, was about $20. Wow, cheap. Very good, expensive. Cheap. And I can make a couple more with the tape measure, because I got a 20-foot tape measure out of it. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, we've seen what we did with tape measures on my channel. We made a loop out of the tape measure. That was one of the best loops I ever made. So, uh, tape measures definitely do more than measuring. Yeah. All right, so what we're doing out here, John's kind of getting a sweep here to find out which direction they are um, so John is that the is that the tone that the one's putting out that's the tone Fox one is putting out and then we've got a second Fox here which when this one stops we call it Fox two it will uh, actually this is the second Fox and the first one will start in about a minute after this one stops Oh, so they, they go randomly one after another, not all on at the same time. No, they're synchronized. It's supposed to be one, then the other, then you have like a minute of space in between to start working towards them. Okay. And then, uh... So, do we have any idea which direction this is so far? I mean, this is... A, let me take a little shot here of how far we are. I mean, this could be anywhere out here. It's Riverside Park. It's a huge park. Uh, I don't know the actual size of it, but we have any idea which direction it is? Well, I started over there by the vehicles down there, and it, it's got me coming this way. What I do is, when the tone's going, I look at my uh, uh, meter on the on the radio, and then the you can see it gets signal. the strongest signal. As I wave my antenna, we can see where the strongest signal's coming from. And he's got this thing. Now, are, are these things? I see you holding it horizontal. Are they? Would it be vertically polarized or horizontal? Because that would, I would think, make a difference to the received signal if it was transmitting yeah, with a vertical that, antenna. I... See? And I'm holding it vertically. Yeah, it sure does. So it was so, now pointing over this way. Let me see what happens. Yeah, so I'd say it's somewhere that way toward the building, huh? Yep. Well, let's go take a walk, start looking. Yeah, this is only my second one, so I'm learning as we go. I've never done that. I'm just wanting to be here part of the, part of the experience. All right, so we did a little bit of walking down the down the park here. What does it look like, John? That way. There's one this way. Pinpointing it that way there. So we'll keep 
walking. All right. And then we kind of triangulate where we think it might be. All right. So. All right, so I already walked a good couple thousand feet. Uh, what does it sound like, John? I mean, it's still a broad area to cover. Uh, you know, this is not the easiest. You got full strength heading that way. So after we find the first box, which is this way, we'll head over to that one. All right, all right so... This one here, we're in a pretty good vicinity here. He's got the attenuator on, so you can really make it directional, having attenuation, so that really you have to point it in the exact direction it is when you get that close. Um, so we're on the ballpark here somewhere, keep looking. So being that we are out here in a large public park, it's probably a good idea to notify your local authorities or others like we did because uh, you are walking around with something that looks like a alien finding unit and uh, there are people out here with their kids so just be cautious of where you're doing this and make sure that uh, you are notifying the proper people when you have uh, nine people scouting around with antennas it's, it's not so like much the, uh, the scouting around with the antennas it's if somebody well, hold on one second like a bloodhound on a signal. Talk about that first real quick. All right, so we're waiting for this. We, John thinks he's really close. We're waiting for the, this fox here to start transmitting its tone. We were talking about notifying the authorities, and uh, last week I called the uh, non-emergency number for the police department, had a deputy meet us out here, showed them what these devices were. I didn't want them to find them in a park. They yeah. say a... Uh, a bomb or something and yeah. uh, so we're waiting for he thinks he's close somewhere that's I'm not continue I'm on full attenuation is now. that is that the right fox there I'm on full attenuation yeah so the signals getting strongest right this way so full attenuation which means you really got to be on top of that thing to hear it it's getting stronger and stronger it's pinging out my meter right here and there it is, right there. Let me see this thing. Look at that. What a nice place to hide that. Now, he put a, uh, a unique number on there somewhere. To prove Take that thing out of there. Let's check it out. We'll leave it there in case the other guys are coming. I don't okay. want to see where I'm at. We'll get video footage of that in a little bit. Here, he's in, man. So what's on that? What's the number for? Um, to prove that we saw it. Oh, okay, so you can't say, well, it's over there. Yeah, so, yeah. so... Okay, so that was one that we have hidden. Someone else in the crew might come around and be looking for it because they don't know where it is. It's hidden in that tree. So, we're going to take a walk now because back over by the Riverside building, about a quarter mile back the way we came from, was the other one, the second one. So now we got to go find that one again. Let's go head over that way. Alright, so we're going back for the second one, which was over by this building last time we were looking. That's the first one, waiting for the second one to come on. Okay. Give me a Over this way. John's on a wild goose chase. He thinks he found it. And you can tell which way the antenna is. Okay. By the six. Yeah. All right. In there. Uh, no, yeah, a third person. Oh, yeah. Here's what I'm confused about is we have two of them. I mean, uh -huh. isn't this like really confusing? Close to base. Wait till we get five. We got two people on the chase here. Both of them heading in the same general direction. I'm following him. <laughs> Seems like the radio choice, everybody, is ID 51, huh? That's what everybody has. 
Yeah. I don't see it. Plastic bag, right in the tree. Oh, look at that. Are you recording? Yeah, I am. And the other transmitter we used in the ammo box was a homemade one. So somewhere wandering down the road here, we have a familiar face. There's Jan. Jan, that's uh. Ready, I think. Yep. KTGKS. Well, here's Jim K4VSR here. He's just come out late to join the join the fun here. Uh, what'd you do? What do you got running on it? All right. What I've got running here is a unit and uh, scanner, and I built the circuit that's on the web and WB two HOL's uh, antenna uh, uh, directions uh, using a discarded one inch tape. And I decided not to put a ballon in the line and or uh, a, a hairpin uh, balance there. And right. I find that it's just fine without yeah. that. It's highly directional and uh, plenty sensitive. Cool. And you got uh, a, you got a and, scanner running here. So and a, I'm using a scanner. And what's neat about the scanner is I can adjust. If you're looking at the frequencies here, I can adjust up and down four megs. The, uh, for attenuation, for attenuation, right. and uh, that, and if I start out on the right on the frequency of uh, one four six uh, five six five, and uh, and then as I get closer, I attenuate up from there by changing the frequency up or down four megs, right, and it works just great. Very good. Coming over the bridge here, and I got. Uh, sound from the transmitter that's about three quarters of a mile away. One four six five six five. Thanks for watching guys. This was a great experience doing the fox hunting. Uh, great for the hobby. Get people active into the hobby. Boy Scouts or, or anything. And uh, get your local club into it. Very inexpensive to make a transmitter like that, a hidden transmitter with a Bofung or a Luton, uh, inexpensive 4-watt radio or 1-watt radio. And you can set it in an ammo can that can be had at a ham fest and make it a great time. Uh, bury it on the beach, what have you. It's a great thing to do. So thanks for watching, 7-3, and see you next time from KJ4YZI.